Hey guys, it's Matt Kelly here. This is probably my most ambitious project ever. Um, and I've undergone this restoration project a little bit differently to what I did with the, um, the fiberglass boat project that I released early last year, early 2016. Um, I was basically granted an opportunity to buy a 15 foot uh, fiberglass half cabin. So it's, a, it's an old boat, 1980s hull, 2003 engine, and, um, and I saw it and I looked at it and I got a friend to look at it and he did some inspections for me and he was like, yeah, done up well, this thing could be all right. This is, and I don't know, after a couple of months, it's come up quite well. So um, like I said, I didn't vlog this experience quite like we vlogged the last one where it was all about the selfie style, hold the camera and show you every intricate piece of the puzzle. This time round, we decided to, to just shoot things as I shot them. So it was all about getting the work done. It was much less about thinking about the vlog and more about let's just get this boat finished. But I captured as much as I could. So I thought rather than try and string it together into a long series, let's just pull it all together and give it to you guys in one foul swoop. So. That's where we're at. I'm gonna talk you through it and um, and we'll go on this little journey together and show you how I went from not having a half cabin to having a half cabin that was very rough to now having a half cabin that I'm pretty happy with. Let's get into it. Now, as with any project, it starts with, really, it starts with stripping, right? It starts with removing all of the old broken stuff. And unfortunately, there were some, definitely some screws here that were not uh, stainless steel. So you can see with the, all the old electrics, it was just a matter of cutting the cables we knew we wouldn't need anymore, and then, um, and then throwing them away. And with all of the old hardware, especially the stuff that wasn't uh, stainless steel, it was remove it and get rid of it pull out the old cleats. Interestingly, um, these weren't self-tapping screws, these were all bolts, which I guess you want for a cleat, but quite hard to get to um, up under the gunnel there, so it took a while. Well, they say it gets worse before it gets better. We've probably stripped, I don't know, 60, 70% of the stuff off that we need to strip off in order for it to um, be painted, which is good. Uh, a few little hiccups, um, old rusted bolts that we couldn't get to because they were right up under the gunnel, so that required some grinding with the Dremel. Um, but all in all, it's getting there, it's getting there. I think back to the last boat restoration project and this is the part of it that you expect to be really, really fast and then takes forever. So not getting too disheartened just yet. Um, it's worth fighting the battle and, and moving through it, but here's the boat. It's a, a 1980 half cabin. It's got a 50 horsepower Yamaha outboard, which I think is a 2003 model, which is still, you know, almost 15 years old, but it's um, it's in rough, it's in pretty good shape. So I'm, I'm happy with it, it runs perfectly. The hull is great and solid. The trailer is uh, sketchy, but I think um, I think all in all, it's it'll come together pretty well. Um, not much else to say right now, but um, keep following the blog blogs and yeah, we'll see where it takes us. To be honest, at this point in time, I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed. It was one of those times where I sort of, I'd sworn off project boats for a little while, just spend the money and get a boat that's in good working nick. And, I don't know, I couldn't pass it up in this case. So you can see here, we've removed the rod holders, we've filled some holes, and I used a wire brush bit on the end of a drill to remove all of the old uh, Sikaflex and glue and whatever they would use, some sort of contact cement around the, the gunnel rubber. This is the boat in a fairly stripped state, as you can see, steering wheel had been removed at this point, throttle had been removed. I made a decision quite early to leave the engine on the boat. I know that's not ideal for any restoration project, but I, to be honest, I don't, I don't have a, a, a crane or anything that I could use to actually lift the um, the engine off, and it's, I, I believe it's too heavy to do um, on your own or without a few people involved, and I also wasn't really game to disconnect the steering and uh, the throttle controls because that's, that's again something I haven't experienced with. But I, so I decided to leave the engine on the boat and basically mask it up as well as we can, and um, and remove the steering and remove the throttle control and basically put them into a couple of garbage bags to keep it clean and, um, and leave them in the boat. This, this marks the very beginning of the sanding and as you can see I've literally done that one little edge. Um, it's coming up nice but the original paint was brushed on, rolled on, I don't know what it was. It was not a neat finish. To the shot, top of the shot there you can tell that's the, the non-skid surface. So obviously you want to keep the non-skid surface but in this case the top half of the 
the video, yeah, that should be smooth. And it definitely wasn't, which meant a lot of sanding to get this boat clean again. But there's the original yellow. It's um, it's something that I guess I decided I was willing to, to bite off, willing to, to give it a shot and see what we could turn it into. The original paint did sand off relatively well. Um, it did come off quite smoothly and it did provide a nice solid foundation to paint over. But there were quite a few days in sanding this boat down to get it to a point where I was willing to undercoat it. That's Nick, otherwise known as Sailing Yak on YouTube. Uh, having a little go on the inside there, just trying to tidy that up. We ended up resorting to quite small power sanders, more than anything, because it meant that we could get into the, the corners and work the curved surfaces. I do have a quite a large, powerful belt sander, but we just found it was almost more effort than it was worth. It was quite hard to get into any detailed spots, so outside of the big flat surfaces, and there's really not that many of them, um, the smaller sanders became quite useful. This is what it started to look like when I'd done the top half of the boat, the deck of the boat, and I'd probably done 90% of it. You can see a lot of nicks of yellow, that's, that's where the, the, the original coat was just a little bit more thin. And you can see we've left the non-skid rough. I always decided we're going to do that. I want that area to be something that I can walk on or stand on even when it's wet, so it's important to keep it quite, um, quite rough. And here we are a step further as we continued to, to sand. Still haven't got the outside of the hull sanded at this point. Knew we'd have to do that. But here you can just tell it we've sort of making a, a bit more progress and the, the top of the boat is actually starting to look quite good. I did have a friend of mine who does a lot of work with boats. I had him come out and look at it and he actually drilled a hole into the transom and, um, and did an inspection of the stringers. And I'm, I'm not sort of equipped to do that really. I don't have that background or that ex enough experience to know if there is rot there. Obviously with a hull this old, you almost expect it. Um, this, this hull had not had any, any replacement parts made to it from what he could tell me, but he said that it was as solid as, as it needs to be for him to be comfortable with it. Which I guess is comforting. Um, you don't want to buy a boat project and then realize that, you know, you, you thought you were doing a little bit of a cosmetic upgrade, which is all, all I wanted to do, right? Was literally just do a cosmetic upgrade and, um, and then to find out that I have to replace something like the transom and, and spend either thousands of dollars or learn a whole new skill set, a bit scary. You can see here, this is the outside of the hull. Um, so you can see where I've started to sand it and then obviously where I haven't, that grainy original surface. Pretty rough surface, that, I don't know how they painted it, I don't know, it must have been brushed on originally. Very, very rough finish. That's another one of the small sanders I was using, just because it helped me really like get the curve of the boat um, quite smooth. It's one of those things that you don't really, you don't really know how you're going to do that uh, when you start, and then you just work it out as you go. Now you'll notice here I don't sand the underside of the hull. This is with a view that we are going to anti-foul this boat and the anti-foul goes on thick. The type of anti-foul that we're using is actually a copper based anti-foul. So you've got to paint it on and then sand off the top layer to uh, open up the, um, the copper finish and that's what actually protects the bottom of the boat. So with that in mind, have not sanded the, the bottom of the hull and actually even to this day, the boat is in the water right now and I've not done that job yet because we needed to work out where the water line was so we knew exactly where we had to sand to. You can see there the left hand bucket seat at the back there. You can see I've sort of cut a line along there. I saw the, the, the seat on the right hand side was, um, was trimmed to fit the fuel tank. So I, um, I got the jigsaw and the Dremel and trimmed the left side to match because it may as well. And here you can see I've sanded almost the entire outside of the boat at this point. So right up to the transom and you can see that line there along the, the edge and, and you can see on the transom where it has not been sanded at all yet. Same with the front here. Just got to sort of tidy up these last little bits. And then we're ready to go, ready for paint. This is it after a wash, just to get all of the excess off, a good soapy water wash to try and remove all of the dust. There was a huge amount of dust here at this point. It was, it was terrible. So good high pressure hose, good high pressure clean. I made the decision not to sand the, in, the interior walls of the boat, the interior edges of the hull. Um, I don't mind if that's a bit of a rough surface. It's not something that needs to be smooth. And if nothing else, I'm quite happy having an extra layer of paint there. 
and this is us ready for paint completely ready for paint and when I say completely obviously not anti-foul but the entire top deck the entire interior and the outsides of the hull down to the waterline I use the same paint this time around that I used on the last boat it's uh it's a it's they call it actually boat coat this is the aqua coat undercoat it's a water-based two-pack I did I did think about all the other options here and, and went back to what I already knew. I knew that I could roll and tip that quite smoothly. This was an interesting attempt to, um, to put a new backboard for the steering wheel. I actually went and bought a bamboo chopping board. The problem was, as you saw in the last shot, the, the inside of it was actually partially hollow. So we, we thought we might be able to fill it. Ended up going with a different solution, but that was my brother Jono having a, a bit of a go at smoothing the corners. First shipment of, of new supplies arrived, rod holders, switches, cables, everything that you could possibly need. When I say cable, all the electrical wiring, all of the lights, it all arrived in one hit, which was great because I knew that the minute I got the paint on, I'd want to be getting ready to, to start to add all of my different appliances. And that's what it looks like when you start to get the undercoat down. So I started on the inside at the front of the boat, just worked our way down. You can see that the undercoat does go on very thinly and I had the same experience with my last boat that I worked on and it made me quite nervous. Here you can see that it, there was something really nice about, um, about getting this spot here cleaned up. It was very, very gross when I first started. So to get it looking like this, I was really, really happy. And this is what it looks like when you get your first coat down on the top half of the boat. Now you'll see as we walk down the side of the boat here, it is still thin. You can still see bits of yellow through the paint, but I was really happy with the roll and tip method. If you don't know about the roll and tip method, um, I was sort of given the advice maybe not to try and spray. You end up getting it everywhere. We didn't have the facilities to do it. Roll and tip works really, really well. Essentially one person rolls, the other one person with a wet brush comes across in the, in the opposite direction to the, the direction that you rolled. And, um, and you basically never see the line that you've painted up to. It paints over really smoothly. Worked out quite well. As we layered the different coats on, this is sort of, sort of how it started to look. I was really, really happy with it at this point. It's something that you, you, you're always a bit concerned as you're painting it. You worry about the finish, you worry about the quality, you worry about the paint. I knew that I'd, I'd invested in good quality paint and you can see there the bottom of the hull had a really nice glossy finish on it. And this is before any, um, any clear coat. So pretty happy with how it's come out. Hey guys, it's Friday the 26th of January. Uh, yesterday was Australia Day, which is a public holiday, which because it fell on Thursday, decided to take the day off Friday. I think I can finish this boat this weekend. I've got obviously the carpet here. I've got everything I need to, to wrap it up. At this point, it's just a matter of getting it done. So um, I'm just arriving at the, the house now. Um, yeah, this should be, should be a good weekend. I've pretty much finished the bulk of the painting. I've just got to clear coat and do the gray. Uh, non-skid. I'm probably gonna do a bit of work at some point on the the bow rail. Uh, I'm gonna, I was gonna buy a new one for that, but I think I'll keep what I had and, uh, and see if we can restore it back and make it look good than just spray paint. Um, apart from that, yeah, carpet electrics, they're the big projects, but I think we're getting pretty close. So, so stay tuned and we'll see how we go. Masked off the um the areas that I was going to paint grey, I thought it was important that I, I don't know if this is best practice, but I thought it was important that we we make the, the non-skid surface a different colour, so you knew where to stand, especially, like, I know the boat, I know where you can and can't stand, but if you want that gritty surface, it would be good for it to be a different colour, so I, I, um, I added some white to my original grey paint and made them grey. It was a bit darker than I originally wanted it, but you know what? It does its job. It's really, really obvious where it is. You can't miss it. And um, I think it looks quite good in the end. You can see here, this is after several coats of white. You really can't see through it at this point. And the holes come up beautifully. The, the outside of the boat, I'm very, very happy with actually. It's, it was a hard job getting all that sanding done. So to get it to this point, looks great. Now we're leading into the time when I can start to think about 
adding things like cleats and rod holders and all those other exciting fun things and really worry about the electrics that was a job that I'd struggled with a little bit last with the last project my grandfather who um, who was an electrician from many years ago was able to come around and help me with that uh, but little things like cable management you end up spending a lot more time working on than you expect we ended up scrapping the, the chopping board idea, the bamboo chopping board, took the original block and actually put it on a piece of plastic, which you'll see in a moment worked out quite well. Here I've just remounted the throttle back into the original holes that it came from. Thought it was safer to do that than, um, than try and reposition it. Added the, the bow sprit at the front of the boat. There's some silicon under there and then three bolts that go all the way through. Now, as we walk down, you'll see that, um, oh, there's the stainless steel grab rail that was added. You'll see that the, um, the rod holders are in, which is nice. I've got two on the, the very back of the boat, two down the sides. The inside of the boat doesn't have a, a, a very uh, sort of thick uh, coat of paint. The sides do, but the floor doesn't. This is because I just wanted enough to seal it. Um, it's going carpet over the floor. You can see there the chopping board. I think that was a really, really interesting um, idea using the chopping board. It's hard plastic, it's never gonna rot, and it provides a really solid base for the steering wheel to bolt to. So, worked out well, and I was very happy to see that, that I hadn't damaged the steering at all in the process of sanding and, it, you know, the bag filling up with water and all of those things that happen in this process. But it worked really, really well. The, the Teleflex steering was good. These are the windows. Got new Perspex cut and bought the rubber trim just from, from eBay. This was actually a much harder job than I expected. I had to sand the outside of the, the window hole just to widen it a little bit because the rubber was a little bit more thick than what I had originally bought. But it came up well. They're mostly waterproof at this point. So, um, so that worked. The original windows were actually very like transparent, like as in there was no tint at all. So I did decide to get these tinted. It's much nicer in the boat to have that, that tinting there. And I think it turned out quite nicely. Again, I can't stress how long it took us to get the windows in though. It wasn't a fun experience. And here you can see the carpet, uh, just finalizing the cutting and smoothing it out, getting it glued down, all that stuff in the boat, the gas bottle and paint, they, don't worry, they're not staying there. They were just there to, to add some weight to different areas. Uh, so the glue holding it down would stick it down. Also added a battery clip to the back of the boat. Got the rubber gunnel down the side and some black rubber trim on the inside and it was time to get the the rego sticker on didn't go quite as glamorous with the drop shadow this time just wanted to keep it really simple and and clean and easy so just ordered these online sort of shipped out the next day and had them two or three days later and i think i think it, it always looks nice to get sort of a custom font for your rego stickers i think it does i think it, it makes a bit of a difference so went down that path this time and I think it came out quite well. Now I'll be the first one to admit, this is not a perfect boat. It's not showroom quality. It's not the perfect restoration. It was not professionally restored by any means. And really it was the changes we did make were just cosmetic because structurally it's, it's sound. So I think what was important to me was that we made it our own. Um, I've got a baby, a new baby that we didn't have when I built the last boat. And I always thought, you know, if she's coming into the boat, you want it to be clean, you want it to be yours. I know that when we freshly painted it, I know it's not dirty, I know that she's not gonna step on a rusty fish hook or anything like that. It's clean, it's, it's nice, and it's what we always wanted it to be. So, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of the experience, the journey. It only took us about a month just working on the weekends to go from it being that rough, bare hull, spent about $1,000 in parts, in, and really by parts, I mean mostly paint, but, um, but all the extra bits, the gunnel rubber and the windows, and really only added up to a few hundred dollars. And we took a boat that was worth a couple of thousand dollars and might be worth at least what we, what we added to it. You know, I, I could probably get that back on it. So it was about building something that was interesting for us and, and worked in the area that we were taking it out in. I think this is gonna be fun to go out into places that I couldn't take the, the previous small boats. There's a video on my YouTube channel where we took one of us, one of the tinnies out into um, Logan River and went and well targeted Logan River bull sharks. Ended up getting that big eel. But I think trips like that will become a lot easier with a boat like this. That those, some of these waters are very unpredictable and just having that, that front cabin and that bit more space and it, it just gives me a bit more confidence to go out into places and shoot videos that I've always wanted to shoot. So 
I think that's what's important we get back to. We get back to fishing videos. That's what this channel was built for. That's what I started making when I started this channel last year, early last year. And I think it's time to get back to that, especially as we move out of the crazy summer months where the weather is, in, in Australia, the weather is incredibly unpredictable through the summer months and it's, the wind is, is crazy out in the bay. As we get through to autumn and winter, that's when I'm, I'm really, really pumped to take it out. So anyway, without further ado, this is how the boat performed on the water. Check it out. <laughs> 